Welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News, Native Information. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so very much for joining me. Hello to our good friends across the north, across the lower 48, and soon to be in other countries. It's so nice to have you with us. On today's program, we take a look at Native foods. Once again, we travel to beautiful Sitka, Alaska, as we have in the past. In this program, we look at the Native foods that the Clinkets there call gold. Seaweed, for instance, is called black gold. It's a term meaning something that is very, very cherished. You'll see some foods that are familiar and some that are not so familiar, all on today's program. Traditional native foods are determined by where you live. Outside Indians might consider beans and squash and venison, their native food, while interior Athabascans love moose and consider that part of their native food, traditional food diet. So why did the people, the Clinkets of Sheatica, settle down and live where they did? <laughs> back a long time ago was set here because of heron eggs and keen salmon and halibut and fish cricks and seaweed and, and that was our livelihood. That was what we lived off of. They settled here because of that. We still get seal. We especially still get deer and seaweed and clams and fish, all sorts of fish. And heron eggs is one of the big things that we still take because here in Sitka Sound, heron eggs is still available. The herring spawn normally comes to Sitka every March. It's an important time for our people. It begins the what I'm told is called our, our Tlingit calendar, our calendar of harvest. My great grandpa tells me that first the herring would come and spawn and then the salmon would come. And then after the salmon spawned, at the mouths of the river would be waiting the crab and then would come the halibut. And then the halibut would flip their tails and it would send the seaweed ashore to be harvested. It's the beginning of our year, it's the beginning of our harvest. It's a sacred time, it's a special time of gathering and celebration. We're very proud to have this rock here. Originally, this was part of the beach, uh, just across the street before uh, this building here was built and the parking lot put in. This is what we call the herring rock. It's sacred to the Kiksati people for there are great stories of its, of its power an ability to bring the herring here each year for our spawn. The mystical story was that there was a Kiksati woman that was there on that rock and she had very long hair and she fell asleep and when she woke up the herring had laid their eggs in her hair. So we call that a mystical story of the herring rock and the Kiksati ladies are sometimes sometimes called Kiksha. It's legends like this that tell the stories of the Klingit people of Sitka, Alaska. Legends of the animals, legends of the land. 
Take yaki dayu to tanacha For thousands of years, the Klingit people have respected the land, and in turn, the land has respected the people, providing a bounty of natural resources for the Indian people who dwell here. From the waters that bring the fish, seal, seaweed, and herring to the land that provides the other necessities for survival, the Klingit people of Sitka have been blessed over the years. One of the things about harvesting, it's always done with the greatest respect for the animal that you take. It's not mistreated, it's not talked about, it's taken and it's well cared for, clean. It, it, it has to be that way because that's the way we were taught. And later on in life I learned that it's out of respect for the animal that gave his life to us, for us, for us, for our food. Even today, when we go out with this modern technology and modern boats and stuff like that, we're still we still have a lot of respect for nature because we feel like uh, with, without that respect, it's very possible we're not going to be very successful. It's all our subsistence gathering was right here around Sitka in the days before the Russians. A lot of our subsistence gathering was right here, halibut. You've heard about those Klingit halibut hooks. I guess the halibut would come in there and bite. See, the reason why I say it's more deadly than a, than a circle hook is once he gets in there, that's it. Can't get away. There were also a lot of uh, seal around here. Seal, fur seal, and uh, sea otters, lots of clams, cockles, sea urchin, yeah. Yes, when I, when in the springtime, when you break the sea urchins on open, they get the eggs out. Among all those islands out there, there's uh, 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 seagull eggs rocks. We gathered seagull eggs. Whenever it seemed like we gathered too much, it really isn't enough because there was a way that we could preserve our food, and one of them was in seal oil. Chief Dietitian for the Southeast Alaska Regional Health Consortium, Libby Watanabe, took us to the home of Isabella Brady to learn more about the Tlingit people's native foods. We have this uh, oligan, oligan oil here, and I'm not sure where I got it from people. They know I like oligan oil. It's got a powerful smell to it, and it's very good nutritionally. Use it with herring eggs, potatoes, seaweed, and we also have, this is seal oil. Now these are really nutritious fats as far as fats go because they're unsaturated, you'll see at room temperature the seal oil on the right is very fluid and liquid and that's important because in our bodies after we go ahead and consume these oils it behaves very similar so the saturated fats if you think about Crisco or lard it just sits there in sticky clumps and um, it does the same thing in your body. It's harmful because it sticks to the walls of your arteries and veins and clogs them up so the blood can't flow. Well, we know what happens then if it block, blocks an artery or vein to the heart, it can cause a heart attack. If it blocks an artery or vein to the brain, it can cause a stroke. Well, these oils, on the other hand, are just wonderful because they're fluid. They don't build up in the arteries and veins and therefore they're more healthful for your heart and cardiovascular health. Venison stew right here, which is really, really great. It's uh, made by my son-in-law, John, John James. And we have a really big um, 
We have a big venison roast. I didn't even know that we had. That's a hindquarter. And this is for the old plingets like me, is our fish heads. The elders will fight over that, and um, you can bake it um, high in those wonderful omega-3 fatty acids. It's a good source of protein. So um, those are truly a survival food as well. They give you protein and um, the fats for energy. We've got the um, Southeast delicacy, and we're, since we're at the herring, herring egg capital of the world, <laughs> we've got herring eggs here, and we harvest them on hemlock branches. So what we do is we um, cut some of the hemlock branches from the tree and tie them together and anchor them down with a rock and go set them at low tide at a spot on the beach where we think the herring will come in and spawn when the tide comes back up and covers the branches. And um, if we're lucky enough for that to happen, then you keep checking your branches and checking them. And when they get full of herring eggs like this, then you can just bring them home and trim them up. OK, anybody for some fry bread? Please. Huh? Any kids want a piece of fry bread? Fry bread, known throughout Native America as a staple, has become a traditional clinket food as well. This is a long process to get this because you have to be aware of when the uh, low tides are going to be and there are certain times of the year when you can uh, get this. And it's uh, dried seaweed. You can put them on potatoes, or you can make seaweed chop suey. And uh, people uh, love this stuff. I call it black gold. The black seaweed is like a survival food. It's got um, sodium and iodine in it. And it's also got protein and iron in it and um, calories for energy. So boy, if you get stranded anywhere, any seaweed that you can get your hands on, you could survive on that. Half smoked sockeye here that I, I got earlier, and you heat that up in the stove. Any of these types of seafoods, and especially the salmon, are high in omega-3 fatty acids. Again, that's good for your um, healthy heart, and they're a good source of protein. You add a little bit of salt when you smoke it, so there's some sodium. Um, we've always loved it. It's been a traditional food, very healthy, and um, it's low fat, high in omega-3 fatty acids, high in protein, and you just feel so good when you eat these kinds of foods, you know, it just is so satisfying. Beach asparagus, you'll notice it looks just like the commercial asparagus that you buy at the store, and it grows wild here on the beaches. It's got kind of a salty, crunchy flavor. It's a much brighter green when it's fresh, kind of like some of the lettuce leaves here. And um, then you blanch it and pressure can it. So we had this in the jar here. And um, this is packed with vitamin A, real nutritious, high in fiber. It's got sodium in it. And um, it's a real favorite. It doesn't grow in most locations, so it's really a favorite here in southeast Alaska and Sitka. That is the dried Hudson Bay tea, and my sister sent, sent me that from Juneau, but it just grows kind of low to the ground in little shrubs, and um, it can be dried. Pick it in the spring and dry it, and you can just sprinkle it in boiling water, and it's a, it's a pretty strong um, brewed tea. It lifts my spirit when I eat these kinds of foods, so I try to eat that as much as possible. And the other thing about it is, you know, when you go out to get these foods, it just um, forms, helps you form tighter bonds with your friends and your family that you work on these foods with. And so um, it feeds my spirit when I go out and work on this food and smoke it and pressure can it and can share it with you know the people I love because they just enjoy receiving these foods so much that it's just a real treat for them so it's just a very enjoyable way of life.
Alaska Natives and Native Americans have high, high, high numbers as far as diabetes go. This came with the onslaught of fast food and white flour and sugar. Diabetes can be prevented with the proper diet, and it also can be controlled with the proper diet. Livy Watanabe shows us how we can live a healthy lifestyle, eating regular foods and our native foods. There has been an increase in native, Alaska natives diagnosed with diabetes. And a lot of the things that people believe that's attributed to is um, the move away from our traditional lifestyle. For example, we used to go out, gather and hunt all of our foods and forage off the land and move around. So then there's a general decrease in physical activity. And I think another um, cause for the increase in diabetes is um, we just traditionally didn't have very many starchy foods, and now we eat a lot of starchy foods. I think that can, might contribute to this type of evolution towards diabetes. It's also a hereditary risk factor. So if your parents have diabetes, then you may be likely to get diabetes. Another thing that could be a risk factor for that is um, if you're carrying a lot of excess weight. So if you are, no sign of diabetes, it might be a good idea to start moving towards a healthful lifestyle so that you decrease your risk for diabetes. And so I usually encourage them to try the plate method. And what it is, it's a real simple meal plan. And I have it illustrated here with uh, Southeast native foods and other regular um, foods that you buy from the store. And it's a meal plan that you can follow for lunch and dinner. And the beauty of it is, it's just as simple as what you see on the plate here. There's no counting carbohydrates, there's no counting calories, there's no counting grams of fat. And I say the simpler the better, because I'm a dietitian and I don't want to go home and do that. I don't want to weigh and measure things. So what you do is you just take your plate and you imagine just dividing it in half and just try to imagine filling up half of your plate with leafy green vegetables and this is wild beach asparagus that my mother harvested in Juneau and she pressure canned it. So um, it's very nutritious, it's high in vitamin A, low in calories, it's got even a small amount of calcium so it's a great food. It has a little bit of a salty flavor to it and um, the idea is just to fill up half of the plate with vegetables, a quarter of the plate with some type of protein food, the um, animal foods and the seafood like the smoked sockeye salmon you see here are just rich in protein and they're low in fat. They have the types of fats in them that are good for the heart, the omega-3 fatty acids. So the omega-3 fatty acids help to give you good, um, a good healthy heart because they help to lower cholesterol levels. So not only are they naturally low in fat, but they can help lower the bad cholesterol levels, which is good for your heart because then your arteries and veins won't get clogged up and cause a heart attack or stroke. So eating as much of the local seafood is really a good idea and it's just wonderful food. The smoked sockeye salmon and salmon in general is a good source of protein which is important for the formation and maintenance of muscle mass. It's high in omega-3 fatty acids which help lower cholesterol levels and decrease the risk for heart attack or stroke. It's got a small amount of calcium. The salmon is also a good source of niacin which helps the body digest and use the foods that we eat, keeps the digestive system healthy, helps with blood circulation and nerve function and helps stimulate your appetite. Again, the beauty is the simplicity and half of the plate is filled up with vegetables, a quarter of it with a high protein food source like the smoked sockeye salmon and then a quarter of it with a grainy or a starchy food item like the rice you see here. The beauty of this as well is that wherever you are in Alaska, you can use the foods that you have locally. For example, up north, it seems like moose is more prevalent, so you could have moose right here. Uh, let's see, fiddlehead fern. I'm not sure what other greens are available up north, 
but certainly fresh produce is usually available, so it's a real easy way for people diagnosed with diabetes to control their blood sugar levels. Not only is it good for people diagnosed with diabetes, but people that want to lower their cholesterol or lose weight or just have a healthy diet. It's an easy meal plan that you can use for lunch and dinner. A healthy dessert like the blueberry yogurt and fresh blueberries I have pictured here for your dessert and it'll satisfy your sweet, sweet tooth and it'll give you um, vitamins in the form of calcium in the yogurt which by the way is a really good idea for people to try to drink um, two glasses of milk a day for the calcium content but lots of native people can't tolerate milk that's called lactose intolerance and lactose is just a big fancy word for the sugar in milk so when people say they're lactose intolerant it just means they can't digest the sugar in milk so um, a cup of yogurt and maybe even a glass of the calcium fortified orange juice Minute Maid is a good brand and it's got as much calcium per serving as a glass of milk so there's really no excuse to not get the calcium you need every day. Another way that people that can't tolerate milk or drink milk can get calcium is if you process your own salmon and right here I've got some fresh pack or plain sockeye salmon is to um, go ahead and cut it with the bone in the salmon and go ahead and pack it in the jar with the bone intact and through the process of pressure canning it'll soften the bones so when you go to mix a fish spread or mix it up for a fish loaf just crush up the bones and that's an additional source of calcium so calcium we all know helps with strong bones and teeth but it also helps with good nerve and muscle transmissions I work in conjunction with the diabetes program and and um, they have a 1-800 toll-free number, so if anybody has any questions or wants additional material, they're more than welcome to call us at the toll-free number and go ahead and ask for the information. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for another Heartbeat Alaska Native News, Native Information. I love your phone calls. Thank you so very much. I get calls and emails from one part of this state to the other. And I thank you very, very much. I thank you that your friends and neighbors gather around and watch Heartbeat Alaska. It's my pleasure for bringing it to you. And we have a fabulous group of award-winning videographers and editors working just for you. God bless every one of you, and we'll see you again next week.